Hi, this is Melissa Manchester, and you lucky people are watching Ken Boxer live on TVSB. Terry Ryken Realtor proudly presents Ken Boxer Live. From the American Riviera in Santa Barbara, California, it's Ken Boxer Live, Santa Barbara's one and only entertainment talk show. Let's welcome the host of the show, Ken Boxer. Thank you so very much. You're very kind. Thank you. Thank you so much. Welcome, welcome to the show. I'm Ken Boxer. This is Ken Boxer Live. And boy, what a show we have for you tonight. But before we get started on that show, I wanted to tell you, if you wanted tickets to be in our studio audience, just like these lovely people are here, you just go to our website, KenBoxerLive.com, and it's that simple. Just click on the icon, and you'll be here um, being a part of the show as our studio audience. It's a lot of fun. I also want to welcome our latest sponsor of the show, Spa Sia, a massage, facial, and waxing place here in Santa Barbara. Thank you so very much for joining the show, joining with us on the show as a sponsor. And what I'd like to do, and I've been doing this for a few months, <laughs> she's, she's still not here. I've been inviting Ellen for the last probably five months to come on the show. Ellen, I know you're in the area. You live just about a mile from here. We want you on the, don't we? Don't we want yeah. Ellen on the show? Absolutely. Well, I'd love for her to be here sitting right next to, next to me and we'll have a great time. Speaking of great times, I can't tell you how, when, when I found out that our guest was going to be on the show, I actually, my stomach had butterflies. <laughs> I've loved this woman for years. She's a Grammy Award winner, singer, songwriter, actress. We have on the show, ladies and gentlemen, Melissa Manchester. <laughs> and we'll be back right after this. Don't go away. Ken Boxer Live is brought to you by the following sponsors. Zodo's Bowling and Beyond and Z's Tap House for the best in family entertainment. Gustafson Dance, meeting the highest standards in dance training. The Eagle Inn, a family-owned hotel near the beach in Santa Barbara. And now, back to our show. Thank you very much. And welcome back. Joining us tonight, the Grammy Award winning singer, songwriter, actress, Melissa Manchester. We're delighted to have this American music icon, very, a true treasure with us tonight. American treasure, that is. She has taken a break from her very busy schedule to be with us this evening. So everybody, let's welcome, let's welcome, come on, give it up, Melissa Manchester. Oh, what an ovation. Lovely. I got, uh, yeah. <laughs> Including dog panting. <laughs> we have a dog fantastic. in the audience. Yes. You've been to San... You've performed here a number of years ago. Uh, I guess I have. I mean, <laughs> yeah. I've been here. Um, I was uh, here with Rod Latham's wonderful Access Theater. And, um, yeah, I've passed through. But I don't recall that I've performed here recently. You? Well, <laughs> I don't have it in my notes. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> But I wanted to, let's go back a little bit. Okay. Before the fame, before okay. the fame, you were, um, from what I read, from Brooklyn? No. No? Okay, I guess. What else I'm have you read? <laughs> <laughs> from New York. I'm from the Bronx of Manhattan. Okay. Yeah. So, high school, when you were in high school, mm -hmm. w did you have the, the pipes back then? No, I went to the High School of Performing Arts for acting, and I was a jingle singer when I was 15, so I was making a living when I was 15. And, uh, and then I became a staff writer at Chapel Music uh, when I was 17. And I'd done street theater and parked cars before I learned how to drive cars. I mean, <laughs> you know, I just had a very adventurous life because when you grow up in Manhattan, you just stumble on adventures. But did you realize back then, early, that you 
thought entertainment would be your, your area? That you could Probably, be because my father was a bassoonist with the Metropolitan Opera. My mother was a pioneer in the fashion industry. She was one of the first women to own her own design and manufacturing firm. Uh, so my sister and I were raised in a very festive version of normal, mm -hmm. and uh, which was to pursue your dreams no matter what. And um, as I said, living in Manhattan, you were just stumbling upon incredible creative adventures, you know, street theater and, and, uh, and the like. So, uh, but it took me seven years to get a recording contract. And, um, uh, and in the meantime, I was a commercial singer and I met incredible people, Barry Manilow, Valerie Simpson and Nick Ashford, Patty Austin. We were all just, you know, traveling in a pack. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But um, back then, I, another thing I read, that you did some songwriting, uh, a songwriting class with Paul Simon? I studied with Paul. What was that pa like? Yeah. Tell me about that. Yeah, I went to uh, college for one year, and then I had to go back to work. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> school was not for me. Uh, but these two friends of mine who were young songwriters, Jeff Sweet, who's become a playwright of note, and Brett Mitchell, um, they, in those days, if you wanted to get a publishing deal, you would still go up and perform live. And I was the girl singer for them. And so we would go to all of these publishing companies in hopes of them getting a publishing deal. And one day, I, um, and I would watch them write, I would, I would, because they would drape these songs on me. And then one day, I went back to my parents' living room where the grand piano was, where I had practiced and all that. And I, I tried writing a song, and it was such a powerful experience. It was really like um, the gates to a second language showed up. And I just started writing and writing and writing and writing. It was, it was, it was a physical, spiritual, mm -hmm. visceral experience. And I ended up um, returning to Chapel Music, where I got a publishing deal. On, you mentioned your career, you, Barry Manilow, the yes. connection yes. with Barry Manilow. Mm -hmm. And how did that come about? You were meeting Barry. We you know? were, you know, we like I said, we were jingle singers, and he was a young singer songwriter as well. And he was in the cabaret world, and I was in the folk and blues world. In New York at that time, there were tons of clubs to play. And, uh, and he heard me sing uh, during Jingle, so he asked me if I would sing on a demo uh, of his. And, um, and I did, and at the time, he was the new music director for a new singer, entertainer, Bette Midler. And at that point, I was performing at a club on the Upper West Side called The Focus. And uh, it was a very interesting club. It was on uh, the West, in the West 70s. And diagonally across the street from me, from the focus, was the Continental Bathhouse where Bette used to perform. So uh, I'd never met her, and she'd never been a jingle singer. And Barry brought her over on a night that they had off. And she had just done the Johnny Carson show for the first time, tore the place up. And so I finished my set. Thank you very much. I was brought over to meet her. I said, congratulations. We're all so excited for you. Because honestly, we all, we all just sort of roamed around Manhattan in a pack, hoping to get a deal or hoping to get a break. And she was the first one who did. And I said, we're, we're all so excited for you. What are you doing now? You were so brilliant on the Carson Show. And she said, well, I'm getting ready to do Carnegie Hall for the first time. And I said, oh, that's fantastic. I said to her, are you thinking of having any background singers? <laughs> <laughs> and she said, took a beat and she said, uh, no, actually, would you like to sing in back of me? And I said, no, actually, I'd like to sing instead of you. <laughs> but in the meantime, I'd be happy to sing with you. So, uh, so I became the toots in the middle. I was the founding member of the Harlettes with Manilow. And uh, yeah, it was just, I worked for her for six months and it was, it was amazing. So, but it comes full circle it because does. we have a video you do? with you and Barry. Oh yes. Would you like to give us a lead? Yes, that? yes. On my, I just released, uh, last year I released my 21st album called The Fellas, which is really the Wait, complete. the 21st album. Yes. Yeah. Congratulations. 
it, it's my 21st album, and it's the completion of an idea that actually started in 1989 when I, uh, when I recorded an album called Tribute, which was my tribute to several of the women singers that meant so much to me. And I always wanted to finish off that idea with a tribute to the men. And it took me a while, and I didn't see how it was going to manifest. But then, because I'm an uh, honorary artist in residence at Little Citrus College, which is down in Glendora, it's just a spectacular place. Uh, they have an incredible music department. And the dean that had brought me in said, can you think of a project where we could use our student orchestra? And I said, funny you should ask. <laughs> and so I used their student big band on the fellas, and it's spectacular. But anyway, I asked Manilow if he would sing, at least consider singing the only duet on the album. Because I paid tribute to Dean Martin and Sinatra and Nat Cole and you know, Johnny Hartman, brilliant, brilliant people. And, uh, and of course, Manilow being him, he not only said yes, but he came up with this complete idea. Oh, said he, let's do a, a tribute to Gene Kelly, not only known as a brilliant acrobatic dancer, but a beautiful tenor voice. And let's create, says he, the original note for note uh, uh, duet between he and Judy Garland for the film from the same name for me and my gal. So we did, it was lovely. Let's, yeah. let's watch this video. Sure, of course. Okay. Melissa Manchester, let's watch the video. Ding dong, ding dong. Do you hear the bells go ding dong? Do you know? Do you know why they ring? Yes, I know. Yes, I know why they ring. Well, you're gonna get a big surprise. Cause I'm gonna set you wise. The bells are ringing for me and my gal. The birds are singing for me and my gal. Everybody's been knowing to a wedding they're going. And for weeks they've been so in. Every Susie and Congregating for me and my gal The parson's waiting for me and my gal And someday we're gonna build a little home for two For three or four or more In love land for me and my gal the bells are ringing for me and my gal. The birds are singing for me and my gal. Everybody's been knowing. Everybody's been knowing. To a web they're going. To a web they're going. And for weeks they've been so They've been so They've been so and so some new soul, something that is blue so they can make a true soul for my gal. They're congregating for me and my gal. Look here now, that's the boss waiting for me and my gal. And someday we're gonna build a little home for two, for three, or four, or five. All right. When I, I wanted to find out, I have a quote that sure. I want to read here. Yeah. It was um, from Smile, Charlie Chaplin's song yes. Smile. It's a quote that they, apparently you, you said, as a performer, a woman, a human being, you're so frequently on the stage and people don't know what's going on in your life, yet you smile and keep going. Mm -hmm. I wanted to find out what what's the secret to sustain when you have those type of things that uh, that you you know you're on stage and you have to perform 
and you don't know what your day was like or what's going on in your life? Well, I mean, that's a complicated question. The thing is that, that as an artist, if you choose that life and if you feel that life has chosen you, you find that if you're lucky enough to do it long enough, you realize that you live your life in chapters. And uh, somebody like Tony Bennett understands that because he's lived such a long time. And he understands, well, he understands that life is a journey for learning. And I subscribe to that same philosophy. And, um, and when you are, you know, and when your life is falling apart, but you have remarkable art to sort of anchor you on the stage, and for that hour or two, the audience doesn't know that they are part of what's keeping you whole. But they are. Mm -hmm. And then you leave the stage, and you fall apart, and you have to keep reframing and learn about what it is you want. You know, Whoopi Goldberg said a long time ago, you have to, at some point, you have to choose between wanting to be a celebrity or being an artist. And um, while it's interesting to be a celebrity, sort of like eating too much sugar, I mean, for me, the, the, the nutrition, the, the spiritual nutrient is from living as an artist. And the fact that I've been able to do it so long is such an incredible blessing. Well, talk about that sustainability. How do you do it? <clears throat> well, I always knew that I wanted to have children. And so um, there was sort of a demarcation point. I was very busy. Uh, in my early 20s, very, very busy. And uh, y there was a point where I was writing an album, recording an album, and touring to support an album, and then I would repeat. And so there, there's a period of time I have no body memory of at all. I see the manifestation of the albums, but I have no recollection, because I was just exhausted. But I, I had such a hunger to do this, and it was so singular that I just uh, kept finding a way. What's really interesting, and so I, I took time off for my kids, and then I started writing in Nashville, which, which is this remarkable place for songwriters. And um, so I did that for a while. And then I started teaching it at uh, USC, at the Thornton School. I was invited to uh, be an adjunct professor there. And uh, I, I did, this was not on my design, but, um, but the thing about teaching is you don't realize how much you know. Mm -hmm. until students ask you questions <laughs> and you think, I know how to answer that. <laughs> but they would come in, they would come in with their projects, right? They mm -hmm. came in with their CDs and there was shrink wrap and photographs and credits and I, I was in an old paradigm because I've been doing this since the early 70s. And I'd say, did you get a deal with a independent label or something? They said, no, we're doing crowdfunding. You should do that. And I said, great, what is that? <laughs> and so my students taught me how to crowdfund. And so that's what I did for the last two albums. And it's this new marketplace. The whole, the whole landscape of the industry that I signed on to as a young woman has changed. Like Spotify, I'm sure. Yeah, yeah. Things. It's just, yes, Spotify is a, is a whole different other thing. But to, in order to get your work actually funded by your, you know, by your village, by your fans. I mean, it, nobody's stalking you. They're just sort of leaning in and they're being like sweet aunties and uncles to make sure that you're on track to do your work. And it's so weirdly wonderful because I am the label. I am the producer. What I hear in my head is actually translated now onto these albums. And uh, it's, it's remarkable. You know, my students have nothing to compare it to. This is the marketplace that they know. But it is really like the, the wheel being reinvented, but it's not quite round the way you knew it. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's really, really a deeply interesting time. What do you find more pleasurable? You, <clears throat> you do a lot of other people's material, and a lot of people do your material. Mm -hmm. Do you find listening to people doing your songs more pleasurable than you are hearing people, or you're doing their songs? Uh, I, you know, I love hearing my music on Muzak. I'm thrilled when I'm walking <laughs> into a plant. I mean, really, it's incredible. Um, I've, I, I'm, I'm honored when people have, have sung my music. I mean, oh gosh, everybody from Streisand to Johnny Mathis and Mel Torme and Kathy Matea, all different kinds of people have recorded my songs, and that's a real blessing because that is what I grew up knowing. For all of these people that I pay tribute to, they, they had songs written for them, draped on them. And um, 
But I, I uh, you know, but I'm also a composer, and uh, I just uh, had a, a, a run of my musical Sweet Potato Queens done in Jackson, Mississippi. So, you know, writing for theater or when I write for Disney, it's, it's writing for musical theater. I mean, all of these things are components of the same impulse to express yourself. And if the idea is compelling enough, then there's a kind of an urgency to, to have the idea expressed. Well, talk about the video we're about to see. It. Oh, golly, yeah. This is my latest video. I started writing this song the morning of the second inauguration of President Obama. Um, there was a photograph that was posted, you know, when you turn on your laptop. There was this photograph of the Capitol, and it was just emblazed in, um, in, morning, in the dawn light. And this song just sort of fell out of me. And, um, and I, I really wanted to write it to help us remember the good that really is at our core and that connects us. And we forget about that. And sometimes it's the last thing that we're reminded of. And um, so, so there's this website called The Better Rainbow. The name of the song is called The Better Rainbow. And, and it's just people posting lovely things about all of us treating each other well, sweet things about little puppies and babies and elderly people and people with disabilities and, and unexpected heroes just falling all over us. And, um, and so this is that song, A Better Rainbow. Okay, let's watch. Sure. Dawn, your golden light lifts up my eyes to see your wonder gone. The night is gone. The storm that broke the sky with thunder to free a better rainbow to see a better rainbow I know there's a better rainbow up and see our secret dreams have wings for flying oh look overhead look how she bends to hold us closer to see a better rainbow believe a better video was you gotta love the light yes which was the name of my 20th album <laughs> I don't want you to know, why aren't you on the hollywood walk of fame 
I don't understand know. that. To I... come to the floor and have a start. Unbelievable. We got just a, like a little bit more. Talk a little bit about, I know your love about art and education. Yes, uh, I, I'm a firm believer and supporter of public, uh, public art education. I think it changes lives. I know it saved the life of Barry Manilow that when he studied uh, music in high school. It really literally saved his life because it gives you a structure. And you know, people can poo-poo it and say, oh, it's just sort of ding-dong world. But the truth about art is that it gives you a structure and it's all about internalized discipline. And so, particularly for teenagers, um, to give them a place to work out half their day within an academic structure is fine, but to give them half a day to work out and learn about the, the artistic structure of whatever they're interested in doesn't mean that they become that. It's that they understand what passion feels like. And so if they become a plumber, they know what passion feels like. That's the important thing about life, is just to be connected to something that, that wakes you up and makes you excited. And we're excited that you spent this half hour Thanks. with us. Melissa Manchester. Thank you. And by too quickly. Yes, I'm very too quickly. Yes. Wow. Well, that's our show for tonight. So for our guest, Melissa Manchester, and for our director, Nick Freddie, and the entire video crew, I'm Ken Boxer. Good night, everybody, and thank you so very much for all of you for being here. Ken Boxer Live is brought to you by the following sponsors. Terry Riken, your broker with a personal touch for all your real estate needs. Gustafson Dance, meeting the highest standards in dance training. Spa Sia, the best in Santa Barbara for holistic facials, waxing, and massage. Gino's Pizza, serving and delivering the best pizza throughout Santa Barbara. The Lovin' Spoonful, yogurt at its finest. The Daily Grind, espresso, juice, and deli. Spud Nuts Donuts. Zoto's Bowling and Beyond and Z's Tap House for the best in family entertainment. The Magic Castle Cabaret, your one and only place to see magic in Santa Barbara. The Eagle Inn, a family-owned hotel near the beach in Santa Barbara. Petrini's Family Restaurant, La Quinta Inn and Suites. Country Catering, Meat Market and Deli. Lido's Takeout. Jack's Bagels and Bistro. The Ken Boxer Live musical theme composed and arranged by Mr. Michael J. Leslie. From all of us at Ken Boxer Live, I'm Baron Ron Heron. Good night, everyone.